Okay. So basically, I'm just going to tell a series of stories and what I've learned from them and what I think we can all learn from them. First of all, there's me. This is me as me. Uh, not much has changed, as you can see. <laughs> I was born on May 24th, 1996, and uh, I suppose you could say it was my mom and my first fight, because she was in labor for 14 hours, and then she finally gave up and had a C-section, so I guess I kind of won. <laughs> um, I, I was a pretty awesome baby, as I think is apparent in the picture here. Now... I just love that picture. Well, the first character trait, stubbornness, which I think anybody who knows me well knows that I sometimes embody very well. Um, and the story that I think fits best for this is the fence story. When I was in preschool, there was another kid in my preschool class who was essentially the blonde boxer from Rocky IV, Ivan Drago. Um, I, he, I could imagine him now just the four-year-old equivalent of, I must break you. <laughs> he was a very mean person. Now, one day in preschool, I pissed him off because I do that. <laughs> he chased me around for a little bit, and he ended up cornering me against the chain link fence, along with his cronies. This kid was four years old, and he had cronies. <laughs> well, anyway, what ended up happening was uh, he shoved me against the chain link fence, I fell down, and I stood back up. So he shoved me against the chain link fence again, and I fell down, and I stood back up. This continued for 20 minutes, because he wanted me to stay down, and I would not stay down. <laughs> it hurt. In fact, um, when you're a little kid, your bones are a little bit more elastic and can bend easier. So now, looking back with x-rays and stuff, because of this fence incident, my spine from that time period curves like So I would be about two or three inches taller if it wasn't for the fence incident. Uh, I, this was about the time afterwards the teacher finally came over after none of us came in from preschool. And his, him and his cronies just chanting, stay down! And I was just like, <laughs> That was the sound that a four-year-old angry guy makes. <laughs> and uh, the teacher pulled him off and gave him a scolding, but not much else. So that was when I resolved to kill someone. <laughs> <laughs> this was my first murder wish. <laughs> first of many to come. Now, I actually spent a very long time deciding how to kill him. I, looking back on a journal that I kept at the time, I was frighteningly, frighteningly elaborate about how. I talked about how I would hide a knife under the slide, how I would get the knife from the lunchroom. Uh, it, was, it was pretty intense. But then I changed my mind because I got an apology letter from Ivan Drago. To this day, I don't know what his real name is. I think it might have been mine. I'm not sure. So Drago writes me a letter that is really... An amazingly apologetic apology. It it was essentially along the lines of, I'm a terrible person, I will go to prison when I'm older, and I'm probably gonna get raped in prison because I'm just that sort of guy. <laughs> At the time, I didn't realize anything was off. I found out about a year ago that my mom actually wrote that apology letter, posing as Ivan Drago. <laughs> because she felt bad because I was so angry at that kid. So, uh, good for her, I guess. I didn't kill him. <laughs> okay. Here's me. Again. Yeah. So I'm quite a stage. He's so much This is me in kindergarten. He's still wearing the same shirt. Was this planned? Okay, for anyone who doesn't know, I am 16, younger than the rest of you, because I skipped a grade. The grade
grade I skipped was mostly first grade. I went out of what would have been about the end of the fourth six weeks of kindergarten and went straight into the first grade. And essentially, it was because the biggest reason was that I was reading chapter books in kindergarten. And the teacher was pretty impressed by that, so she called in the grade skipping board or whatever they do. <laughs> <laughs> and it was after taking out all their dumb tests, I assure you that there aren't that many intense tests for a kindergartner. Uh, it was determined that I was smart enough to go on to the first grade. Um, the thing is, you don't just get intellectually tested, you also get psychologically tested to make sure that you're emotionally prepared to go on to first grade. About a year or two ago, I was going through my filing cabinet, um, looking for, I think it was my social security job card when I was looking to apply for a job. And going through my filing cabinet, I happened to find a psychological report about me going into first grade. <laughs> and there are some flattering parts. It said the stuff at the, especially the, the beginning of the psychological report was pretty flattering. It said, uh, solves puzzles fast, great reading comprehension. Very intellectually curious. But then it went on to say some things that were a little bit creepy. Such as, um, takes too much enjoyment out of the suffering of others. <laughs> <laughs> that the incident, I think, the thing is, they followed me in class for a few days, usually the same woman who wrote this report. And, uh, I imagine the incident that inspired that was that, uh, a kid had been building a giant block town, taller than him, taller than me, and then it collapsed all over him. And I thought that was the funniest thing I <laughs> Because he tried so hard. He failed so bad. It was <laughs> So I rolled around on the floor laughing, even after everyone else had stopped chuckling. Probably for minutes after. <laughs> um, also, it said, uh, lies with frightening ease. <laughs> yeah. I, I did not feel remorse at this age very well. Oh. So anyway, uh, the final sentence in the psychological report, I think, I think the psychologist was being a little bit melodramatic, but it said, uh, it is clear that Trevor is ready for first grade, but is first grade ready for Trevor? <laughs> <laughs> and that was when I was labeled as a potential psychopath <laughs> at age five. <laughs> Don't worry, I was cleared later. All of this is stuff that I discovered in the filing cabinet. My parents don't know that I know, and I imagine that they kept it from me much for the same reasons they kept the uh, letter of apology from me. Potential psychopath. I was cleared in fourth grade. So, we're good. <laughs> okay, and now we come to our last character trait, perseverance. Which is really the same thing as our first trait, stubbornness, except with a better, more complimentary title. <laughs> and for this one, we had for this one I have several stories about um, sort of a journey that I went on. This is my longest story. I'll try to shorten it down because I know the class. No, is about keep going. Okay. All right. When I was a little kid, I moved around a lot. Um, I started off, I was born in Nebraska, moved to North Carolina, where I spent my kindergarten and first grade years. Moved to Nebraska, again, where I spent my second and third grade years. Moved to Colorado, where I spent my fourth and the start of my fifth grade year. And now to Texas, where I spent the rest of the time. Um, I loved North Carolina. Nebraska uh, was great in Omaha, but everywhere else is terrible. Um, just terrible. You've read my idea. You know. <laughs> <laughs> now, the thing about living in Fremont, Nebraska, it was good because it was right next to Omaha. It was bad because we lived right next to a train track, and in, in Nebraska, trains are used all the time. So every night when I'd be trying to sleep, I would hear a train whistle and the tracks start going, and it would be just a deafening sound. Uh, Pretty much the sound of a car crash every night as I was trying to sleep, about every hour to two hours. It was pretty terrible at first. Then it got to the point where I couldn't sleep, I found out after I moved to Colorado, I couldn't sleep without a lot of noise in the background anymore because I had gotten so used to it. Um, in Colorado, now why we moved to Colorado was that my father got laid off. Um, he went to law school and he studied hard and he got good grades. But unfortunately, there is a surplus of lawyers in the country. So he ended up selling real estate for a long time, which you don't technically even have to go to college to do. Um, he eventually went back after he was laid off in Nebraska.
Nebraska. Um, we moved to Colorado, and we lived in my grandparents' basement uh, on my mother's side. Uh, now, in case you haven't figured it out yet, my mother and I argue quite a bit. But her mother and her, God, <laughs> I, 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 I gained a lot of perspective on my mom's life from living there. But um, the basement was very damp, dark, very depressing. For those of you who haven't lived up north, sometimes basements are very large, so it wasn't like a single room. It was uh, a bigger room, maybe half this size, and then uh, two rooms connecting off it, one which was my parents' bedroom and one which was my bedroom, which I shared with my sister. Because the rooms were so depressing, my parents tried to cheer things up by painting the walls yellow, a bright yellow. I despise the color yellow. I didn't before. I do now. <laughs> This was the worst place a kid could pretty much grow up at. Um, and every night, because my sister insisted on sleeping with a nightlight, I could see the yellow walls just glaring out at me because they were so bright. <laughs> and it got to be where I couldn't sleep very well. And that was about the time that I started having insomnia, something that has continued until today. Um, it's not always severe. The funny thing is, when I'm not trying to sleep, I can sleep just fine. But when I lie down and try to sleep, I often have a very, very difficult time, even when I'm extremely tired. And that has been difficult. To put it plainly, plainly insomnia is a bitch. <laughs> First it dulls your senses, and then it dulls your thoughts, and then it dulls your emotions, until you're just wallowing in a pit of apathy. And everything that passes before your eyes is just a different shade of headache. It is not fun. And uh, it was within this sort of insomnia state that I started to not care as much about school. Um, I still got good grades, but I didn't try very hard anymore. And that brings us to two parallel um, different areas, one which brought me to try harder, and one which brought me to slack off. Um, the first one that brought me to slack off was lifeguarding, which taught me how to do your job without doing your job. <laughs> um, my coworkers and I, working in a, our pool, um, I don't know if you've ever seen Workaholics, but it was pretty much like that without the drugs. <laughs> so, it, it was, essentially every day was spent trying to figure out how to not work. I remember one time I was on stand, and a kid started drowning. But it wasn't like, he was flailing around in the water. It wasn't like he was actively passing out. It was okay. And I noticed that he was about three feet from the wall. So I decided that he could make it. So I took out my sunglasses, and I leaned forward in the chair to monitor the situation. <laughs> and then I kept watching. He slowly drifted towards the wall. I decided to close my eyes and count to ten. And if he wasn't at the wall by then, I would jump in and do it. And I closed my eyes because I had to take off my sunglasses because I didn't want to jump in the water again. Because it could scratch me, potentially have to be full. So I had to close my eyes because it was so bright. So. Come on. <laughs> so anyway, I counted to ten and opened my eyes, and uh, he was right next to the wall. Like three inches, so I didn't jump in. <laughs> and he grabbed the wall, and everything was fine. So clearly, I'm in the right. <laughs> um, I remember that one time, it, this was when apathy really started to take hold. I remember one time, my co worker brought in the TV, which was soon confiscated, and put it in the guard room. I spent most of my time watching the show 16 and Pregnant, which I do not even like. <laughs> Essentially, the American Idol of terrible life decisions. <laughs> and I, I really don't enjoy the show, but I spent all my time watching it. Soon it was confiscated for our own good. Um, I also did some constructive things. I read a lot when I was a lifeguard, so that's good, I guess. Education. Um, and now let's go to the opposite situation, one that taught me to work hard and care a lot. And that was when I joined the newspaper staff. Shout out to you guys. Okay. Um, <laughs> newspaper is my passion, especially writing satire for the paper, is something that I will work hard at even when I don't really need to. Um, I remember one time I wrote a satire about the bus cuts, if you remember that, earlier this year. And it was okay. It was funny, but it wasn't the best it could be. And I just decided to go to sleep. And this is when insomnia sometimes is a tool, because I would decide, okay, time to give up and go to bed. Nope. Not <laughs> so after lying in bed for an hour and a half, thinking about, because when I start lying down to sleep, the thoughts just start coming at a breakneck pace. And one of the things that I started thinking about 
which I hadn't been worrying about at all before, was that my satire wasn't good enough. So I got up and I turned back on my computer, and I spent the whole night rewriting the satire. It ended up being, rather than the stupid thing I had before, it was the district cutting staircases from around the schools in the district, which was, you know, a, a metaphor for the bus system. And it worked very well. I thought that was one of the funniest ones I've ever written. So newspaper really taught me that, first it taught me to take advantage of the time that I have, and to keep trying, even when it doesn't really matter. Because what really matters is what you think matters. It doesn't matter what you get a grade for. It doesn't matter what you uh, what you get paid for even. Because if you love what you do, it's, your life is much happier than if you're doing something that pays you a lot, but you dislike it. Um, that's why I think I decided to be a physics major instead of an engineering major, even though engineers make much more money. Because I just love pure physics. Because it, it unites the behavior of the smallest particle with the largest galaxy. And in that, I see true beauty. So I'm going to leave you guys with a quote from George Bernard Shaw, a playwright. We don't stop playing because we grow old. We grow old because we stop playing. I think that that's very true. I think that in life, if you don't give up on your inner child, you don't ever really die the second time. Because we all die a few times in our lifetime. There's a physical death, and then there's several emotional deaths. Um, the less emotional deaths you go through, the happier your life is. And I recommend that everybody keep that in mind and keep their inner child